Hello and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. In this video I'll be taking you through this grey Mazda 3 painted in titanium metallic paint code 38P. I'm painting it in Standox solvent based base coat. So as you can see the prep work's already been done. I've been mastered up. I was using then a wax and grease removing solvent with those blue rags and then wiped over the whole panels twice using that air gun and one of those yellow tack rags to remove any more dust and lint that may have been left on the panel. So the top coat colour for this job I ended up mixing up 350 mils because I'm actually painting a bumper bar. I've left most of the footage of the bumper bar out but um, we'll focus more on the panels. So 350 mils of colour which is then thinned down at a 2 to 1 ratio, so 2 parts colour and then 1 part reducer. So it's basically half of the volume of your colour is then added with reducer. Which would probably end up giving me about 400, 450 mils of colour after it's been mixed up. So first coat down, there you go, putting the second coat on there, you can see it's pretty much all covered up. Spray pressure for this is probably about 25 psi or 1.5, 1.7 bar. As you can see on this second coat here, I'm starting to do the blend across this front door. key to having the colour blending correctly, and trust me this is from experience, is having the colour correct in the first place. So you do your colour spray out, you have a look at it, the car, if it needs a bit of an adjustment you can then put a little bit of yellow or blue or black or silver or whatever it may need. So I'm putting down here the blending clear, which is just a clear coat of base coat to help the uh, final blend coat of base coat colour drop into that wet coat of base coat because sometimes you can get patchy areas where you've done the blend. I would only do this on a light metallic, something like this, if it was a black or a dark blue or any dark colour you don't need to use this um, blending clear for because the colours will blend out a lot better. I'm doing a blend over there on the bumper bar at the same time. So now I've grabbed my other gun. It's a good thing to have two guns. Uh, most good painters these days do have a dedicated clear gun. Um, so for this last coat, I'm just doing it nice and quick. I've pulled the, the gun back a little bit, jacked the pressure up to 2 bar, 30 psi, to allow that uh, metallic to stand up and blend out nicely too. Reason being that you want to get um, a clear gun is that you could say paint a car like this in metallic, think you've cleaned the gun out correctly and your next job could be a clear over base but solid colour black and then you end up getting metallic flakes inside a solid colour and you probably have to repaint it again so my clear gun clear only ever goes through it. I'll use the clear base coat as well, maybe a bit of plastic primer which is clear as well but it's a good idea to have a dedicated clear gun. So as you can see we're putting our first coat of clear on. I've let that flash off for about five minutes while I've gone and mixed the, mixed the clear up. Flash off times will vary on what paint you're using, what reducer you're using in the paint and obviously boost temperature, ambient temperature and all that kind of stuff. I've set the booth to about 29 degrees, I like it nice and warm. It's also quite warm over here in WA. It's actually about ambient temperature, about 30 degrees already and it's before, before 10 o'clock I painted this, so. Just not going on too wet with this because it is a Mazda. They've got a very fine peel on them. Uh, it's not like a European car that have a very thick uh, orange peel on them going a bit quicker than what I would if I was painting a European car as well. So 
so pressure for the clear coat here, I've got it around 2 bar, maybe a touch lower, which is about 29, 28 psi. So yeah, pressure at about 2 bar. Um, I found uh, too much lower and the paint just goes on too heavy. Um, it just atomizes too heavily and it, it will go on too heavy and you end up getting the, the wrong peel that, you, that you're kind of looking for on a car like this. They're quite efficient. For this job, as far as clear goes, I ended up using 600 mils for the whole job. so. That's 300 mils per coat, which isn't excessive, so that's a, a full rear bumper bar, which usually take a bit of paint anyway, and three panels, so. This car is actually going uh, today in the afternoon. It went, the customer picked it up, and I decided to use a fast hardener to help it cure up a bit quicker so that we could then polish it after baking it, and. I bake my jobs for 45 minutes at 60 degrees. Um, if you can get the booth up to 80, this booth only goes to 60, so I used to like to bake them at 80 degrees. Um, paint's pretty safe up to 100. I've, I've got them up to about 110 degrees with the infrared lights before, but you don't want to go much beyond that because you'll start having the paint peel up. So. always paint through those door gaps. You see how I'm finishing halfway through the quarter panel instead of finishing right on that door gap? If I was uh, both coats, if I had have done my, uh, my stopping section at the actual door gap there, well then you can end up doubling up if you're not careful and you, you start getting big uh, build ups and big sort of paint starts running across those uh, door gaps. So always paint through them. So as I said, I, I didn't bother you with all the for you with all the footage on the bumper bar, but I'll give you a look at the second coat of clear. I actually blended this bumper bar as well, so I've only just put clear over that driver's side edge of it. Yet yeah, I've coloured up this side because there was a little bit of damage there that we sanded out. Another reason you don't want the pressure too low is that being that it atomizes a lot heavier, you can end up getting big runs, especially on bumper bars like that. Um, around the corners, there's so many little angles in that uh, they can end up running along those lips and stuff like that. So you just got to be careful of having the pressure too low. In the in the effort to probably save a few hundred mils of paint, you end up creating yourself a few hours work in polishing and possibly repainting if you go through. So this is a quick look at it after I've finished spraying it. 
if you'd like to see a couple of different guns, gun setups and demonstrations, I've got a couple of links at the end here to a Cyderjet RP and the Devilbus GTI Pro but with the HELP air cap on it at the very end. So <clears throat> this is a this is a car all detailed, polished and ready for the customer to pick up out the front. So Thanks a lot for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.